Bob is ready to get explosive with today's game, Bomb Squad, for your IntelliVoice hooked into your IntelliVision. Let's go ahead and take Bomb Squad, pop it in my IntelliVoice, which is hooked into my IntelliVision, see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. It talks. Electronics presents Bomb Squad. Bomb Squad was published by Mattel and released in 1982. Although it is technically possible to play it in an Intellivision without the Intellivoice add-on, it will be near impossible to beat as the voice in the game gives you vital instructions. The manual opens with the following. Don't look now, but your time bomb is ticking. It was planted by Boris, the evil terrorist. You will have less than half an hour simulated time to disarm it before the bomb destroys your city. Since this is an Intellivoice voice synthesis module, voices will be talking to you. Frank, the demolition expert, will give you instructions on what to try next, and Boris himself will needle you now and then, reminding you it won't be easy. Bomb Squad is a bomb deactivating game for one player only. In order to deactivate the bomb, you must find out the numeric code. At the beginning of the game, you can select how many numeric digits the code contains from 1 to 3, as well as one of three difficulty levels. When the game begins, you have 30 game minutes to find the code out before the bomb explodes. Explodes. The numbers in the code are hidden on grids that are five rectangles high and four across. Each rectangle represents a circuit. By entering and repairing a circuit, you can either get it to light up green, showing you that it is part of the number when displayed, or turn it into a dark animated circle, indicating that it is not part of the number. The manual shows what each number looks like when displayed, although it accidentally adds a lighted rectangle that should be darkened for the number seven. Using the manual is very helpful in strategically picking circuits that can help you eliminate as many numbers as possible. The overlay is also very helpful in learning how to play the game. The top side buttons are used to enter a circuit to repair it or to speed up the speed of your movement when you're in a circuit. The lower left side button is used to work with the tool that you are holding and the lower right side button is used to drop a part that you are holding. The top three numbers on the numeric pad are used to select the length of the code and the difficulty at the beginning of the game. Game. The numbers 4 through 7 are used to select a tool to use when trying to repair a circuit. Number 8 is used to exit a circuit after you've repaired it. Number 9 is used to hear Frank tell you the sequence you must follow in order to repair the circuit. After you have repaired at least two circuits, you can guess a number by pressing the enter button, then hitting a number and pressing enter again, or you can press clear to clear out the number. The disc is used to select a circuit on the first screen and to move tools around when repairing a circuit. After you select a circuit to enter, Frank will show you what parts need to be repaired and what order they need to be repaired in. However, his order is sometimes out of order because you know how wacky Frank can be sometimes. Crazy Frank. When trying to use a tool, Frank will also let you know if you need to move it if you are out of position. In order to repair a part, you must first cut it on the left and right sides with the cutters. Then you use the pliers to pick it up and drop it either on the very top or very right of the screen. If you drop the part back on the circuit board, it will cause your timer to speed up until you pick it up again. Once you dispose of the old part, you need to select the replacement part from the top of the screen. The replacement part is a bit of a mystery, but it will either be the same shape as the old part or the same color as the old part or it will be the gray wire located on the right side of your part selection area. The one nice thing is that all the parts that need to be replaced on a circuit board you are working on will share the same characteristics. So if the correct replacement part is the same color as the original part, all other parts that need to be replaced will be the same color as their originals. Or if the first part just needs gray wire, then all the other parts will need to be replaced with gray wire as well. After you select the replacement part, you must drop it onto the board where the original part was, then use your soldering iron on the right and left of the part to solder it in. Frank will let you know if it was the right or wrong replacement part at that time. If it is the wrong part, your timer will speed up until you cut it out. If it is the correct part, you can move on to the next part, pressing the sequence button if you need to hear the updated order. On the easiest difficulty, you move pretty slow, and you have to replace two to three parts per circuit. If you cut out the wrong part, you will have second seconds to resolder it in, or the circuit will go completely dead and black, and you won't be able to use it to find out if it's part of the number or not. On the medium difficulty, you move faster, and you will have to replace three to four parts per circuit, and there will be more replacement parts to choose from. If you cut out the wrong part out of order, you will now have eight seconds to cut it out. 
Also on medium, parts can start to overheat. When they do, they will flash and you will have eight seconds to put out the fire with your fire extinguisher or the circuit will again go dead. On hard difficulty, you move even faster, must replace four to five parts per circuit, have even more replacement parts to choose from, and have nine seconds to resolder parts cut out of order or to extinguish overheating parts. However, on hard, if you don't fix them in time, the bomb goes off ending your game. Also, sometimes when you hear a siren in the background, a vibration might drop a part on the board that you will need to dispose of. Scoring wise, you get 20 points for cutting out a part. For replacing a part, you get 30 to 50 points. The higher the difficulty, the more points. And you get bonus points for repairing a circuit. The more parts it had to repair, the more bonus points you get. If you correct a code number digit, you get 1,000 points. And if you disarm the bomb, you win the game and get 2,000 points. Gravely speaking, while most of the game looks a bit basic for an Intellivision title, it does have some nice looking tools and cool game over screens. Sound and music wise, the background sounds do a nice job giving the game a tense feel, and I thought the voice work was very well done, especially Boris's goofy villain voice. They'll never do it in time. The cold, the cold, figure out the cold. We'll get them. Replace this third, this second, this fourth, this first. Family friendly wise, the game would most likely get an E for everyone rating if released today. Currently at PriceCharting.com, the game has a value of $7 loose, $11 complete, and $22 new. So what did I think of Bomb Squad? It took me a while to warm up to it, but I like it. The game has some nice strategic elements, including figuring out correct replacement parts and picking which circuit to work on next, including switching up plans if you accidentally kill a circuit. The voices and sounds also do a good job adding to the tension. Perhaps the weakest element for me was the controls. I wish you could fine tune the speed of your movements. On easy, you simply move too slow, but on hard, you move so fast it can be hard to get your tools perfectly in place. Left or right or left or right or. And I really wish there was some more forgiveness with the tool placement. There were several times I was just slightly off, but lightly tapping the disc caused me to overcompensate. This happened more on the higher difficulties and was especially frustrating when I had a limited amount of time to cool off an overheating part with my extinguisher, but kept getting off by just a pixel or two. But despite my occasional control frustrations, I still liked the game once I got used to it and I would recommend that Intellivision owners with an Intellivoice at least give it a try. So where am I going to rank Bomb Squad for the Intellivision? It's going to be somewhere in the middle of my rankings alongside some other solid titles. I do like Venture More at 24, but I will put this ahead of Atlantis at 25. So the 50 games that now rank for the Intellivision, Bomb Squad is deactivating a bomb at the 25 position. Bomb Squad can drive you crazy, but it can also be fun. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter, and click the bell so you don't miss any future videos. At this time, I'd like to thank Ellis Gregor for supporting the show on Patreon. If you would like to sign up to support the show and gain access to exclusive perks, please go to patreon.com slash noswaregamer. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care, and Frank, the next time you give me the order to replace the parts in, please put the order in order. Silly Frank. The cold, the cold, figure out the cold, are you sure? Very good, oh, you did it, you did it, you're a hero. They'll be looking for us.